So encephalitis refers to inflammation of the brain tissue itself. In veterinary patients, this can be caused by infectious diseases, so things like bacteria, protozoa, or viruses, but also can be from an autoimmune or an immune-mediated attack against the brain tissue itself, with the immune-mediated form being more common in veterinary patients. The terminology around encephalitis can be a bit confusing. So you have encephalitis, which means inflammation of the brain tissue, you have meningitis, which is inflammation of the meninges, which is the covering of the brain itself. And then you have more complicated terms like meningoencephalitis, which is inflammation of both the meninges and the brain tissue itself. So as we discussed, the autoimmune form or the immune mediated attack against the brain tissue is the most common form of meningitis and encephalitis that we see in veterinary patients. For the purposes of this talk, we'll talk about meningoencephalitis of unknown origin, or for short, MUO, and we'll use it as an umbrella term that refers to several subtypes of this immune mediated inflammation. The exact cause of MUO is not fully understood, but we've had several studies that have found some genetic components and breed predispositions. So we assume that these breeds have a genetic tendency to overreact to some stimulus that causes an abnormal attack against the brain tissue. Several breeds are noted to be predisposed to developing this disease, including Maltese, Pugs, Yorkshire Terriers, Chihuahuas, and French Bulldogs, among others. Young female dogs tend to be overrepresented, but any breed, gender, or age can be affected. The clinical signs that you can see in a patient suffering from MUO are really varied and really depend on the part of the brain that's being affected. Common signs that may be seen include changes in behavior, changes in their mentation, changes in their ability to walk, seizure activity, and even balance dysfunction. Sometimes combinations of signs can be seen all at once because multiple parts of the brain are being affected. To diagnose MUO, you should start with a physical and neurological exam. Many MUO patients will have a normal physical exam and normal blood work, but the neurology exam is generally abnormal. The complete neurological examination will help to localize which part of the nervous system is being dysfunctional and an MRI of the affected area will be performed. If evidence of inflammation is present on the MRI and if it's deemed safe, a CSF tap or a spinal fluid tap can be performed to better characterize what type of inflammation we're seeing on the MRI pictures themselves. This tap can be performed at the base of the skull or it can be performed lower down by the hips depending on the patient. Finally, infectious disease tests can also be performed on the spinal fluid or on blood samples to make sure that an infection isn't the actual cause. The only definitive test for diagnosing MUO is a biopsy of the brain tissue. Biopsy is also the only way to try to distinguish between the types of MUO, but due to the invasive nature of this procedure and risk to the patient, we don't generally perform it pre-mortem. Since MUO is suspected to be an autoimmune disease, suppressing the immune system is the staple point of treatment. Generally, we'll achieve this by using steroids such as prednisone or dexamethasone, especially in the short term, but often additional immunosuppressive medications are going to be used to help treat MUO. Some of those medications include cytosine or cytosar, cyclosporin, azathioprine, luflunamide, and procarbazine. While there's many protocols that are reported, there is no best protocol yet established. And generally, the drugs that are chosen will be based off the neurologist's preferences and the patient's response. Routine monitoring is recommended for patients on these medications. Treatment for MUO is generally a long-term process, talking years to lifelong. Some patients are able to come off medications completely, while some stay on them for the rest of their life. Relapses of the disease are common as medications are weaned down or discontinued. Some patients respond poorly to treatment regardless of the intervention chosen. The prognosis for patients diagnosed with MUO can vary from fair to good and largely depends on their response to treatment early on in the diagnosis. MRI findings of increased intracranial pressure or shifts in normal architecture have been associated with poorer outcomes.